Hey kiddos, we're on chapter 10 of our read aloud and um, it's getting pretty interesting. Chapter 10, Sunday night. I'm so glad to be home, my mom said, taking her shoes off and lying on the couch. She looked exhausted. I had the longest day. I half smiled. I'm glad you're home too. I loved my mom. I was always happy to see her, but I wish she had stayed at work a little longer. I see you finished your paper, she said, waving a hand at the table. I looked at the table and freaked out. There was only one sheet of paper on the table. I had written two, one for me and one for Shane. Where was the second one? Can I read it? My mom asked. I picked up the paper and lost my breath. It was the one I had written for Shane. I wiped away a band of a bead of sweat from my forehead. I'm still working on it. She stood up and stretched. Let me know when you're done. I'm going to go eat some of the chicken. In the I'm going to go eat some of the chicken in the fridge and head to bed. She winked at me and walked toward the kitchen. Big day for everyone tomorrow. I waited until she was out of the living room and sprang into action. My paper had to be around there somewhere. I searched the entire living room floor and looked beneath the couch. It was nowhere. I felt sick when I sat on the couch and remembered what Fox had said. I'm so hungry I could eat anything. Did he snatch it before he ran off? Why was this happening to me? It was Sunday night and I was out of time to write anything else. My night couldn't get any worse. Jonah Johnson, my mom yelled from the kitchen, get in here right now. What was she yelling about? I hadn't done anything wrong. I gulped because she only used my full name when I was in trouble. I took a deep breath and went into the kitchen. My night did get worse. The refrigerator door was wide open and the chicken pan was on the floor. It was empty. The 10 thighs and legs were gone. Please explain this to me, my mom said in a low voice. I could swear I asked you to save me some of the chicken for tonight. She shook her head and stared at me with wide eyes. What's going on with you? First you disobeyed me with the candy and now this. I stared back at her as I tried to think of an explanation. Foxy decided to eat the chicken after all? Did he gobble it all down in record time before he ran out of the house? You've written your paper and you've had plenty to eat, she said, pointing to the empty pan. Go to your room and think about what you've done. I don't know what to do with you. That's when I came to the only decision that could save me. I told her the truth. It was the fox. I told her the entire story from when I met Fox until that moment. She put a hand on her forehead. Now you're telling lies? She asked with a broken voice. She couldn't stop blinking. Was she crying? Go, Jonah. Just go. Go to your room. I tried to plead with her to believe me, but she waved me off. I marched out of the kitchen, through the living room, and straight to my bedroom. I slammed the door and jumped on my lumpy bed. It was a good thing we were leaving the next day. Fox was my friend and he was awesome, but I'd never been in as much trouble as I was since I met him. I grunted when I realized I had left Shane's paper on the living room table. I did not want my mom to see it because she was already in a bad mood. I got out of bed, cracked my door open, and listened to make sure she wasn't around. It was safe. I, I grabbed the paper and rushed back. I heard my mom talking on her phone in the kitchen, so I grabbed the paper off the table and tiptoed my way back. Before I got out of the living room, I overheard her. I don't know what to do with him, she said to the other person. I didn't raise him to be a liar. Maybe I made a mistake moving him from the city to the country. I want him to be happy. My heart broke. 
because I want my mom to be happy too. I went back to my room and stared out the window. For all the trouble Fox had caused me, I still wanted to see him again. He made me happy. My mom didn't make a mistake bringing me there. I want, I never wanted to leave. All right, kiddos, we're going to move on to the next chapter. It looks like we have enough time. <clears throat> Monday morning. I clutched my backpack as I walked through the school halls. It still felt odd to me as I'd only been there once before. I was surrounded by kids I didn't know and none of them acknowledged me. I felt invisible. Hey, Jonah, someone shouted from behind me. I didn't have to turn around to know it was Shane. I didn't bother to correct him about my name that time. He stepped in front of me and put a hand on my chest to stop me. Sam was by his side. Not so fast. Where's my paper? I had tossed and turned all night in my lumpy bed trying to decide if I should give the paper to him. I didn't want to get beat up and I didn't want him to take advantage of me for the rest of the year. I couldn't get Melissa's voice out of my head from the farmer's market. Do yourself a favor and stay away from Shane. He doesn't do any of his own work. Someone has to stand up to him. I pulled my backpack around and held it in front of me. I looked at the big kid and thought about it for a second. Fox had told me that I could change my mind if I wanted to. I decided to go with the decision I had made the night before. I unzipped my backpack, pulled the paper out, and handed it to Shane without saying anything. His face lit up when he grabbed it, and he pushed me back. That's what I thought, Jonah. He laughed and looked over at his best friend, Sam. Sam has something he'd like to ask you. Sam looked like a soldier with his sailor's haircut. I've got a science project due in Mr. Wheeler's class next week. He cocked his head and smirked. I'm going to need you to do it. I didn't bother to answer him because I had no intention of doing it. Besides... I was never any good at science. The class bell rang and all the kids scattered into their classrooms. Shane pulled Sam back towards Miss Cox's class. What a loser, he said. I followed him into the class, took the same seat in, in the front I had on Friday. Melissa was next to me again, smiling with her big dimples. Hi, Joe, she said. It's good to see you again. I believed her, so I smiled back. I didn't want to tell her I had written Shane's paper for him but she'd figure it out. Good morning, class, Miss Cox said to all of us. She was sitting behind her desk and smiling. It was going to take some time to get used to her high-pitched country twang. Did everyone finish their papers? I was embarrassed to admit I didn't have a paper, so I didn't say anything. I was hoping it would take the entire class time for others to read their papers, and Miss Cox wouldn't get to me. It would give me time to write my paper that night and bring it to bring it in the next day. Was that too much to hope for? Who wants to go first? Any volunteers? <clears throat> Miss Cox asked, scanning the room. Everyone fell silent. Anyone? Melissa raised her hand. She was brave. I'll do it. Thank you, Melissa, Miss Cox said. The class is yours. Melissa stood up and walked in front of the chalkboard, then turned around to face the class. She cleared her throat and smiled at me. For the first time, I realized how cute she was. My best friend is my cousin Millie, she read aloud from her paper. We grew up together and like the same things. She's got a different, she goes to a different school, but we see each other all the time. I don't have many I don't have any cousins. My uncle Mike never got married. He always said girls were the devil, except for my mom, who was his sister. She was an angel. That's why Millie will always be my best friend, Melissa finished. The class clapped for her. Had I missed most of what she said? I hated getting lost in my thoughts and losing track of time. My mom had the same problem and said it was a sign of being a genius. Thank you, Melissa, Miss Cox said. And when, when Melissa handed the paper to her, that was very well done. She looked at the paper for a minute, then set it down on her desk. Who's next? She asked the class. The room was silent again. No volunteers? She asked like she was surprised. 
I was only 11 years old, but I knew no one volunteered to do something they didn't want to do. What was so shocking about that? Shane, she said, come on up. I didn't turn around to face him because I didn't want to see the stupid smirk on his face. It was too late to change my mind, and it made me feel sick. My heart was racing. You're the next lucky contestant, Sam said, laughing as Shane passed by. Shane stood in front of the chalkboard and winked at me. I wasn't sure if that meant he was grateful or if he was trying to show he was better than me. It's not fair if you think about it. He didn't do any of the work and was about to get all of the credit for the paper. You're going to love this, Shane said to Miss Cox. I put a lot of work into it. Go ahead, Shane, Miss Cox said. We don't have a lot of time. I was glad to hear that. He could take as much time as he wanted. He held up the paper in front of him dramatically. My Best Friend by Shane Connors. He looked around the room and winked at me again. And then he read exactly what I wrote for him. My best friend is my mommy. She dresses me every morning and changes my wet sheets. The class burst out in laughter. As I was tossing and turning in my lumpy bed the night before, I realized I could never let someone else take advantage of me. I had to give him the paper. Shane stared at me like I was trying to burn a hole, like he was trying to burn a hole through my head. The class was still laughing at him, and Miss Cox was trying to make them stop. I didn't write this, Shane said while he was staring at me with hatred. Miss Cox looked back and forth from him to me, like she was trying to figure out why Shane wouldn't take his eyes off of me. She focused on me and shook her head like she knew exactly what was going on. Shane, she said to him, are you saying someone else wrote your paper? He smiled because he must have realized Miss Cox figured everything out. That's right. Miss Cox cleared her throat and stood up. Someone's in big trouble. I gulped. I was already in so much trouble with my mom. Once she found out about my, about this, my life was over. Shane. Miss Cox continued. You're already behind in this class. If you're telling me that you didn't write that paper, then I'm going to have to fail you. I think she winked at me from the corner of her eye. Shane lowered the paper. His mouth was wide open. I'm going to ask you one more time, she said. Did you write that paper? Shane rubbed his forehead like he couldn't think of the right answer. After a minute, he stopped and stared at the floor. Yes, I wrote it. Keep reading, Sam shouted. We want to hear the whole thing. The class cheered and broke into laughter again. Shane stood there, hanging his head. Miss Cox held up a hand for the room to be silent. She looked like she wanted to laugh, but did everything she could to keep from doing it. Shane doesn't look like he feels very good. I'll go ahead and take that paper. He looked grateful when he handed it to her, then headed back toward the class. He made sure to stop by my desk. You're dead meat, he whispered. Okay, kiddos, we're going to leave off here because I'm going to run out of time. Until next time, we'll figure out what's going on.